got an interesting one for us today. Uh, this is going to be a tutorial about how to make a pixel perfect laser that fires from a point and shoots at 360 degrees. You can use this for a myriad of stuff. You could use it for a laser, like a beam, or you can use it for essentially a ray casting on 2D to check collisions or do all kinds of cool stuff like that. I actually even saw someone use it for a really cool uh, lighting engine. So let's get down to it. <clears throat> Start a new frame. We are going to need an active object, throw it on in there, bam. This is gonna be our player, so rename this dude player. <clears throat> we need another active object, this is going to be our laser. So name that laser. Um, for the laser though, we are gonna to wanna to change the art. We are gonna make this into a yellow square. Let me resize this stuff. I usually, uh, I usually, I have a 4K monitor, so when I'm actually using my computer, I run at 4K. And when I make videos, I make them at 1920 by 1080 because people complain that it's too zoomed out. But that causes some issues where things are on the screen. But anyway, <clears throat> enough of that. Um, we need to resize this laser. So just drag it on down, make it small. Then let's go back to the art on the laser. We need to change the action point and the hotspot. So go to view hotspot and use the quick move to set it all the way to the left. Get the action point and set it all the way to the right except we want to drag it one pixel out of our object. Now, um, I don't like this uh, background being white. I find it hard to see things whenever it's white. So let's make it black. Boom. And we're going to need to insert some backdrops. So let's do that now. And make sure that these backdrops are set to obstacle. So under obstacle type, make sure obstacle is set so that we can do collisions. Otherwise, nothing will collide with it. We'll make it blue. We're going to stretch this thing on out. Then I'm gonna just make a duplicate of it. Then I'm gonna clone it because I want to make a duplicate that is uh, not the same object, so it's a new object. We're gonna rotate it. Essentially, it's a child object. We're gonna rotate this 90 degrees and we're gonna use this for these other walls here. We're gonna clone that there. Okay, so next uh, we want to add some more backdrops. These are just gonna be some little collidable backdrops we have. Make sure you set them as obstacles uh, to let the player test the laser out uh, on some interesting angles. We just don't want there to be, you know, just four walls. So throw a few of these pepper them out around here. All right, perfect. Now we are going to actually start the coding. So we're gonna insert a comment. I like to have comments. Set the back color to blue. I like blue. Set the font color to white. I like blue and white. And we're gonna say uh, player, oops, I can't type, player collisions. That's the first thing we're gonna do. <clears throat> so we're gonna test to see if our player object collides with a backdrop, and if it does, we're going to go to movement and stop. Oh, wait, I didn't set a movement. I don't wanna program the movement for this guy, so we're just gonna give him a built-in movement. We're gonna give him eight directions. So anyway, now we can stop it. Perfect. All right, now we need to um, update laser position and angle. So to do this, we need a alterable value we haven't set up any yet in our laser we're going to call it uh, angle to mouse and what this is going to be is the angle between the player object and the mouse which is where we're going to be having the laser point all right so <clears throat> we want to always set the position of our laser to the same position of our player so select select position and then relative to player so now our laser will follow the player um, the next thing we want to do is always update that angle to mouse variable and we're going to use a formula um, instead of doing angle of a vector which I used to do I found one someone told me on the forum that there is a different one that is uh, much more accurate and it's called ATAN2 I'm not going to explain how it works if you guys want to learn about it just look it up so we're going to always set the alterable value of angle to mouse so uh, type in what I type ATAN2 parenthesis we need the Y mouse and we're going to subtract the Y position of our player. Now we need a print or a comma. Now we need the X position of our player. And from that, we are subtracting X mouse, close the bracket off and finally add 180. All right. <clears throat> um, so we are, we now have the laser following the player and we have set the value of angle to mouse to this formula. Now we need to set the angle of the laser to the value 
of uh, angle to mouse. And we're going to use one for maximum quality. So let's go ahead and check this out and see if it works. It does. We have some really nice uh, angular 360 degree movement. Perfect. <clears throat> now we need to run the loops. So we're going to be using fast loops. Um, what fast loops is essentially allows, it's like a, it's like a loop. Okay, you have a program uh, in Fusion works with it, it. It cycles. You have the whole thing starts at the top, gets to the bottom, starts over. That's one cycle, and the art is updated presumably at the end. Um, now, a fast loop will do what it's supposed to do as long as you run it, or till you break it, or until it runs out of loops, and that happens in one cycle. So everything that happens, you will. For example, let's say I was moving a, a player. Um, if I ran 32 loops moving an object one pixel at a time, instead of seeing it move one pixel at a time, it'll run all the loops till they're finished and it'll just move that object 32 pixels before you ever see it because it's happening inside of a game loop or a game cycle. Hope that makes sense. All right, so <clears throat> we want to always, um, well, actually, first we need to do something, we need to set some stuff up here. So uh, this will make sense in a bit. So we are always going to set the flag off under our laser and that's flag zero we always want that to be off <clears throat> we're also always going to set the alterable value of of um oh didn't do it yet we need another alterable value sorry guys um add one more we're going to call this scalar i spelled that wrong scalar this is the value at which we are going to scale the laser because what's going to happen here we're going to use loops to increase the size of the laser until it hits something, then we are going to stop the loop and cycle up, restart the whole process. And uh, we're gonna, every time it's over, every time a cycle has happened at the top here before the loop runs, we're going to essentially shrink that laser back down to zero and then start it over. So that's what we're doing right now. We are setting this internal flag zero off, which you'll see why in a second. This is how we're going to, to shut the loop off. We are also going to set the alterable value of scalar to zero. All right, <clears throat> so now we need another always event, and this is going to be where we initiate the loop. So go to fast loop, start loop. We're gonna call this loop scalar, and we're gonna run it 1,000 times. Now this just needs to be enough times to get it off the screen, have the laser be long enough to be the maximum length of the screen. Um, it won't overshoot because, uh, first of all, we're inside of a boundary, and second of all, because we're going to break these loops before they're finished. As soon as we hit something, we're, we're stopping. So <clears throat> you're not really wasting processes here. All right, so start the loop scaler 1,000 times. Now we need to do an on loop. And on loop scaler. And we need to add more to this condition. <clears throat> Ask if the flag is off. So flag zero is off. At this point, we want to increase the length of our laser. So we want to add to the alterable value of scalar. And this is going to be pixel perfect. So we do this by 1.0 divided by the original size of our laser, which was 32 pixels. So 32.0 because we want this to be a float. Boom, that's pixel perfect. <clears throat> so now we need to also make sure that we set the scale. Uh, on the X, we're setting the X scale of our laser to the value of scalar. And we'll use one for maximum quality. Now we need to have a collision with the backdrop and stop the loop, that, loop if that happens. So go to uh, on loop, scalar. <clears throat> if this is overlapping a backdrop, oh, no, 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 oh, sorry. That I did collides. Replace that with collisions overlapping a backdrop. And if that happens, we want to pull it back by a pixel or by a scale because it's scaled too far. So we're going to add to scalar and we are going to add <coughs> um, negative 1.0 divided by 32.0. Okay, and we also need to set this, uh, the scale, the x scale, to the value of scalar. One for maximum quality. Um, but now we also need to set the flag. Uh, flags, where are flags at? Here we go. Set it on. We're going to turn on flag zero. All right, now when flag zero is on, then we're going we're gonna to get rid of the loop. So, <clears throat> um, Go to our laser, 
we're gonna say where the heck are flags? Uh, Alterable values flags is flag on and that flag is zero. If flag zero is on, we are just going to go to fast loops, stop loop, scalar. This should work. I think this is everything we need. Let's find out. There we go. Look at that. It's pixel perfect collision. And like I said, you can use this for even like checking line of sight. For example, say that this uh, player here was actually an enemy and our player was behind that. We could always check to see if the line is touching the player. And if it ever touches a player, you could have uh, the enemy like do something, go after them or something. But right now, if the player was hiding behind this, you would see that the uh, enemy would never see him. So now we're going to uh, create some interesting particle effects to come out of the end of our laser. So to do that, we need to insert a new object. And we're going to name this object part underscore emitter, which stands for particle emitter. And this is simply going to be the object from which our particles are going to spawn. So shrink this down a little bit. And let's start a new section here. So make a new comment. Call it part underscore emit. Now what we're going to do is always have the particle emitter follow the um, action point. That's why we stuck the action point of the laser at the end, because that's where we're going to want this particle emitter. So always set the position, and we're going to set the x coordinate to uh, under the laser, go to position and select x coordinate of action point, and then do the same thing for the y. Position, set y coordinate, go to the laser, position, y coordinate of action point. Let's test this to make sure that it is actually working properly. And that's exactly where we want it. As you can see, it's perfectly at the end. So uh, a couple things though, we don't need it to be that big because our particles are gonna be very tiny. So let's shrink this down. And we also don't want it to be visible. So uncheck visible at start. Now we need to actually create some particles. So throw in another active object and call this uh, part underscore one. That way we can create multiple particles and just this will be our naming convention and we'll have particle one, two, three, four, et cetera. Um, all we need for this, just make it a yellow square just like we had our laser, except we're gonna make it really small. Uh, we're gonna make it like two, not 21, two by two. Okay, so um, we need to give our particle some alterable values. As you saw, I clicked on it here in the workspace toolbar because it's really tiny. I can't see it actually in my frame, which is fine. A um, Couple things though, actually, sorry. The first thing we wanna do, we don't want this particle created at start. This is something we're gonna create through code. Um, and then we need alterable values. We need two of them. We're gonna need a value called trans, which is gonna be the transparency value. And we need Y speed, which is gonna be the value at which this uh, object moves up. Now we wanna give these things a behavior. So go ahead and do that now. And we want to always add two trans. So we're gonna add a value of maybe, I don't know, about three to trans. Um, now we're gonna find out if uh, the alterable value of trans is greater than a number. And we're gonna say maybe like 180. That's about the point at which it becomes completely translucent. And if that happens, we're gonna destroy it. Now we need to also set the value, the transparency value to the value of trans. So that is under effect, I think. Yep, effect compatibility, set semi-transparency, and then go ahead and just grab the value of trans. Now we also want to have it move up by the, the value of Y speed. So <clears throat> set the position to its, uh, set its Y coordinate to its current Y coordinate. And we're gonna subtract the value of Y speed. And that's because uh, negative values go up on the Y axis. All right, so now we simply need to um, actually spawn these. So under always, we are going to start a new loop. So fast loop, start loop, and that loop is gonna be called part underscore emit. We're gonna run that only one time. So constantly we are going to be doing this. So on loop, part underscore emit. So on this emitter loop, we are going to create the particle and we are going to create it relative to our spawner, our particle emitter. Okay, uh, we also want to randomize a few values to give these things some sort of depth. So we will uh, set the alterable value of, not trans, of Y speed to R range, sorry, R random. 
it's a random range. So this is a value between. Uh, this is going to return a value between two numbers. So um, this is the y speed. Since we are subtracting, we want to keep this positive. We will say zero. So some of the particles will not move upward. And mm, two. Some will. They will move between one and two pixels up per cycle. All right. Uh, what else do we want to do? We want to offset just a tad on the x-axis. So set the position, the x-coordinate, to uh, the x-coordinate of the emitter, and we're going to add a random range. Oops, uh, random, and uh, that's going to be negative two, comma two. So it can be between negative two pixels to the left, or just negative two pixels. So like two pixels to the left or two pixels to the right. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> this should this should be working now. Let's give it a little test. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It might be going up a little much. Still pretty cool though. All right, um, the last thing we are gonna do is we are going to make it so that this laser fires whenever we hold down the left mouse button and stops firing when we let go of the mouse button. So. All we gotta do for that is uh, where it says always start loop scalar 1000 times. We're gonna replace that with a condition. <clears throat> Go to the mouse and select repeat while mouse key is pressed. And we're gonna make that the left button. So all this, these loops will, will happen when we're holding the left mouse button. Now we need to turn them off. So let's insert them here under run the loops, a new event. The mouse, uh, repeat while mouse key is pressed. Same as before, left mouse key, except we're going to negate it. So this means it'll happen as long as the left mouse key is not pressed. When this happens, we want to stop the loop. Uh, that was called scalar. <clears throat> and we also want to uh, set the alterable value of the scalar to zero. And we want to set the current um, x scale to scalar. So set x scale to the value of Scalar, where is it? There it is. And that should work. Oh no, one more thing. See how we always are running this particle emitter? Um, we don't wanna do that now. We're gonna change this to uh, only whenever we're holding down the left mouse key. Otherwise there'll be particles emitting constantly, which wouldn't make sense. So replace this with an event, the mouse, repeat while mouse key is pressed, left mouse button. All right, let's test this. This should have done it though. Ooh, it's a strobe light. Yeah, so there we go, guys. It's pretty good. Uh, and like I said, this can be used for all kinds of stuff. Like you can use this to, like, instead of just a laser, you could use it as a raycaster. Like, let's say um, the player here was actually an enemy, and the player in your game was to the right of this block. Well, if you constantly have this um, this ray angle towards the player you can check for collisions, and if there are collisions, then you know that the enemy sees the player. So right now, he would be unable to see the player if the player was behind that block. But if you wandered over here, boom, you can see the player, and then he can react, like go after him or something. All right, well, I appreciate you guys watching this video. I hope you found it educational. Um, if you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them down below, and I'm pretty busy dude, but I will try to help you out if I can. Um, I have a Discord channel. If you guys want to pop in there, I will leave the link down below and you can ask for help there or drop suggestions or even just talk amongst each other and help each other out. Um, lastly, this won't be rele uh, relevant in about 10 days, but currently there is a humble bundle that uh, has Fusion and a bunch of exporters and the dev version for like $15. So I recommend you guys pop over there and grab it. So uh, thank you guys for watching. You have a fantastic day. I'll see you guys in the next video.